Sirius, in the heat of anger, what was the worst decision you've made? What were the consequences? So you're angry, you make a bad decision. Then what? Throwing my phone because I was arguing with the Lenovo customer support about the warranty on my broken laptop. The phone hit the TV which cracked the screen on the phone and TV. Now that I'm using Internet Explorer on a library computer I regret everything. When my sister and I were much younger, we fell out, argued, for, probably, the very first time. She was just old enough to be trusted to walk around the house on her own and stuff, and I'm about 5 years older than her. We fell out, I can't remember what over, but, shortly after, she came back into the room we had been in. She was in tears and holding a piece of paper. It was a picture of me and her holding hands and the words, I'm sorry. I ripped it up in front of her eyes, threw it to the ground and left the room. I'm sure she doesn't remember this, but it still gets me to this day. We get on as well as two siblings possibly could, nowadays. I reckon if I asked her she wouldn't have a clue, but I'll never forget looking at her as she welled up right in front of me. Worst decision I ever made while angry? Telling a suicidal friend he was a pussy and just wanted sympathy, so as usual, like most people, turned to suicide for that sympathy. Consequences? I saw a good friend blow his brains out that day. There was this kid at my school who was a openly gay. No big deal, I'm all about equality. Except this kid was convinced that he could get with me, and make me gay. Every day he would try to flirt with me and make me super uncomfortable. One day I was changing after basketball practice, and he came in the locker room and smacked me on the ass in front of all my friends. So naturally I beat the shit out of him. I'm a big guy, just about 6 feet 3. The gay guy was maybe 5 feet 6. My friends had to pull me off of him, and when I looked and saw what I had done, I realized the severity of my actions. He was covered in blood and was barely conscious. I thought I had hit him only a couple of times. His parents freaked, and I was almost expelled for committing a hate crime. My parents are convinced that I hate gay people, and they made me take a tolerance class. He moved schools, and I saw him at a gas station once, and he cowered in fear. It sucks to be the bad guy in somebody's life, and if I could go back I would. But I can't. My younger brother was troubled in his teens, to say the least. He had a lot of anger issues. I've never been a fighter, however he and my older brother were totally different, they saw violence as the only answer to disagreements. Anyway, one night I'm in my house with my friends, and I get a call from my mom, my younger brother and his friend were at her house tormenting her, they were both shit faced drunk. I made my way there, she only stays a couple of streets away. In the time it took me to get there, she'd call the police after my brother had hit her and thrown her down the stairs. She'd managed to get him out of the house, but he and his friend were trying to break the door down to get back in. My brother had quite the reputation with the local police, and so they sent as many resources as they could. Five police cars and a police dog unit. My mom's street was lit up in blue and red flashing lights by the time I got there. My brother and his friend had ran into the large park behind my mom's house when they heard the sirens of the police. So the dog unit was out trying to find them while I comforted my mom. They eventually were found hiding in a bush and dragged back to a police car in cuffs. This was a Friday night, my brother was supposed to be working all weekend, but I knew if they took him away he would be locked up until the Monday at the earliest. I spoke to the policeman in charge and convinced him that I could control my brother when he was drunk, lie, and pleaded with them to let him come stay at my house rather than lock him up. My mom tearfully agreed, and they let me walk away with him. The policeman, however, gave me his mobile number and told me to phone him direct if there was any more trouble with my brother, as he would be patrolling the area most of the night anyway. My brother and I walk away, and to begin with, no problems. Then as we get closer to mine, the drunken slur start and he tells me he hates me, this is all my fault, he's ashamed to be my brother because I'm gay, etc etc. So, I decide I don't want him to come to mine, and reach into my pocket to get my phone, so that I could phone that policeman and just have him taken away. At that precise moment, I look up and my brother has swung a punch in my direction. 
I dodged it and clocked him in the side of the head with my phone, smashing it. He almost lost balance, but then definitely did when I punched him again. I then completely lost it. All the rage for what he had done to my mom, for what he'd said to me, for the way he acted, it all came out. I was kicking him repeatedly, I was wearing Timberland boots, and punching him over and over. It wasn't until I had sat on him, pinning him to the ground and punched him one final time that I realized what I'd done. I watched as his head flopped back, his eyes rolled back into his head, and a pool of blood appear under his head. I was certain he was dead. I can't phone for help, I've smashed my phone. I can't shout for help, it's 2am and there's nobody around. Right then I make the single scariest decision I've ever made. I put my coat under his head and left him there in the pouring rain. I ran back to my house faster than any human has probably ever moved. I get to mine, burst in the door, shout at my friends to call an ambulance, tell them where my brother is, then take off running again back to him. Luckily he's still lying there, out cold, but breathing. One of my friends arrives a minute or so later. We keep him warm until the ambulance arrives. That policeman also arrived at the same time, he said it was likely my brother wouldn't remember what happened, he was that drunk, and that he wouldn't put this in his final report. I got in the ambulance with him to the hospital, and then sat there for the next 8 hour waiting for him to regain consciousness. When he was able to have a visitor in the room, I walked through, ready to apologize. What happened next blew me away. He broke down in tears immediately, apologizing for always being such an insufferable asshole, begging me to forgive him. And that was the end of my brother's troubled teen years. He ended up with a broken nose, half an ear missing, from scraping against the ground as I kicked him, a fractured cheekbone, and a hairline fracture in his skull. He couldn't go to work for a month, which was made even more torturous for him because my mom, understandably, refused to talk to him or do anything for him. They didn't speak for about 18 months, until he gave her her first grandchild. That brought the whole family together and completely changed him. Now our family is stronger than ever. We may have come out the other side stronger, but that feeling where I thought I'd killed my younger brother, that feeling will always make that angry decision the worst decision I've ever made. Apologies if this comes out as a wall of text, I've just typed it on my phone. This also means I may have to edit a few times to clear up any typos because of ducking autocorrect. TLDR, my brother beat up my mom, so I beat him to within an inch of his life. Didn't say goodbye to my mom the last time I ever saw her. Wished in my head she'd die. Only because I was pissed off she and my brother were going to Fiji without me, and I was stuck with having to go to work. But I didn't realize it was because her radiation therapy hadn't worked, and she was pretty much going home to die. I had no idea it had progressed to that stage, so when she came to hug me I turned away, so she gave me a side hug, well that was the best she could do as she was pretty weak at that stage. I still feel like the shittiest person alive thinking about her face that morning, and her little bony frame pressed up against me. Edit, hey, thanks for the nice comments guys. I didn't realize anyone was going to take any interest in my story. I explained below a bit more about the situation in a reply to someone. I also should have explained that I guess my mom didn't tell me herself probably because she was a super positive kind of person. In the last couple of months before she passed, she was still telling me her plans about what she was going to be doing, in her words, when I get better. She had plans for where she was going to go forward with her career. She had a psychology degree, but worked with disabled people in a respite center. It didn't seem like she could die to me really. That added to my shock I guess. My mother died from breast cancer 5 years ago. She was an English teacher, so it seemed only natural that she would have written a diary to my brother, me, and my sister. Me and my twin brother were only 12 at the time in which she passed away. We knew the gravity of the situation. Mom had told us everything about what was going to happen. When we got copies of the diary, one thing that really stuck out was this. Don't waste even one second feeling guilty about anything you may have said or done to me. It does not matter, I love you all anyway, and I know that you all love me. Even if your last words to me were, I hate you for not letting me go to that party. My sister was quite the rowdy teenager, 
This bit isn't part of her diary. I don't care. I love you when you were babies, and I love you just as much when you were or slamming teenagers. I used to feel guilty about some of the things I had said to my mom in the weeks before she died. Now that I am a mom myself, I know that this would not have mattered to her. You will understand this when you become parents yourselves. I'm sure your mom understood and loved you. Edit, I wrote this directly from a copy that my aunt had written on the computer, and she's notorious for having poor grammar. On another note, I'm hardly any better, sorry grammar Nazi bros. When I was 19, I worked at a summer camp as a sort of supervisor of a group of counselors. There was an event coming up, and I had wanted to take a day off in order to attend. My boss insisted that it wasn't possible for me to take the day off, so I decided to call in sick because it pissed me off. Now, knowing that I would need a note from my physician, I actually went to the doctor the following day. My normal doctor was not in, and a nurse practitioner was filling in. She did a pretty thorough exam, poking and prodding my stomach and asking if it hurt, etc. I probably reacted in a couple of areas trying to sell my illness. At this point, she recommends that I visit the ER because she believes I may have appendicitis, this means a better doctor's note, right? I'm in the ER, my entire family is there at this point. They're having me drink the barium milkshakes to prepare for imaging to see if I need to have an appendectomy. I have to drink 4 of these things over an hour, I'm on my last one, and the ER doctor comes in and tells me he's going to have the surgeon come in to chat, knowing that they're going to take these pictures and everything will be fine, I'm not concerned. Well, the surgeon comes in after I finish the last drink, he says that he can see I'm in some pain, still selling it, to which I explain that we're going to take some pictures to see if it's legit, which will turn up negative. He then explains that he doesn't need the pictures, and we should just go to surgery now. 10 years later, I'm appendix free, and to this day still haven't told my family. TLDR, I faked being sick to get back at my boss and now I don't have an appendix. Around when I was 9 years old, my older sister was always a bit of a bully to me. At the time she had a broken leg and was using crutches to get around. While walking down the stairs. She hit me with one of her crutches. Apparently at the time I had had enough of her shit, so I turned and kicked both her crutches out. Halfway down the staircase. She fell down about 9 stairs, and probably had to keep the cast on her leg for another few months because of that. My older sister was teasing me mercilessly when I was about 8 years old. I was stewing over it for about an hour, and decided that the best revenge would be to destroy her favorite blanket that our mother had made by hand, one for her, one for me, cut from the same cloth. I grabbed her blanket and a pair of scissors, and proceeded to cut the blanket to ribbons in front of her. She started laughing hysterically which was not the reaction that I expected. I looked at what was left of the blanket, and saw my initials on it and realized that I had mistakenly destroyed my favorite blankie. Punched a cop in the nose and broke it. It was instinctual after having a ducking horrible day coupled with some creepy ducker following me for 4 blocks. I thought it was the creeper, not the cop, I hit when I felt a heavy hand on my shoulder. The cop was freaking out on the ground, and his partner pulled his gun on me yelling to put my hands up. I had to explain why that mistake happened. Worked okay, but had to go to the police station to explain my story. Found out the cop was about to ask me if I noticed my wallet was about to fall out of my pocket. Ends up with the broken nose cop saying it was okay, and that it would be let go if I bought him the burgers he was on his way to get. His grin was comedy gold. Ended up buying burgers for the whole department. That was, expensive. Edit, yeah. I was really lucky. This happened when I was 18, and I'm 21 now. If it helps, white as can be. For a broke college student, over $250 for burgers is a bit steep. I'm just happy it all ended on a positive note. My parents don't know and probably never will. Thank God or whatever other deity. Let's go with, Odin. Thank Odin.